Configurations can be a great way to show different versions of the same part within the same part file in SOLIDWORKS. For instance, if you have a piece of hardware that has multiple sizes, it would make a lot of sense to simply create multiple configurations of that piece of hardware rather than individual part files for it. Within configurations, there are two major things that we can control. Those two things are the dimensions that are used throughout the particular part, whether it's in sketches or in your features, such as extrusions, as well as the state of features, whether they are suppressed or unsuppressed. If you check out my past webinar, Configure Your Way to Assembly Efficiency, I go very in depth into how to create configurations as well as how to use design tables to help drive configurations. This particular part that you see here is part of an Allen wrench tool that has multiple sizes of Allen wrenches attached to it. This particular part has multiple sizes assigned to it as well. They vary from fairly small to fairly large. And in order to control these dimensions on this particular part, we've actually implemented a design table. Within SOLIDWORKS, design tables can be very powerful because we can use the power of Excel to drive our configurations, both the dimensions within that part as well as the state of the features. Let's take a look at this design table within this part. Here, I can see I have all my sizes listed as well as dimensions for the length of the, the Allen wrench and then the diameter of the Allen wrench as well. This information could also be really helpful on a drawing. Let's see how that process might work. I'll choose to make a drawing from this part or assembly. We'll choose a specific template. And I'll go ahead and insert my standard views. Once these views are inserted, we'd probably want to show the dimensions. Fortunately, SOLIDWORKS, SOLIDWORKS makes that really easy with the model items tool. I can simply choose to insert the dimensions on the entire model. And we can see those all come into my drawing. If need be, I can reposition these for clarity. But since this part has multiple configurations, it might be really helpful if I could go ahead and show that design table within the drawing. Well, fortunately, that's an option that we have within here. Let's go ahead and choose a drawing view. I'll choose to insert a table, the design table in this case. And if we zoom out a little bit, we can see that design table was inserted. We'll simply drag it onto our drawing sheet. And now I can see all of the different sizes for this uh, Allen wrench right here on my drawing. Right now though, we can see that those sizes are linked to a specific dimension, but it's not clear which dimension that might be. Well, there's two different ways that we could go ahead and make that a little bit more obvious. The easiest way is to probably go ahead and turn on your dimension names. Fortunately, in this part, we renamed some of these crucial dimensions to go ahead and apply a descriptive name to them. For instance, here I have my length, which corresponds to the length on the design table. And I also have my hex diameter, which again corresponds to the hex diameter in the design table. Now that we have our dimensions clearly spelled out within our design table, it might also be helpful to show examples of all of these different sizes that we have within this particular part. We'll see here we have 10 different sizes of this, uh, this Allen wrench. So let's go ahead and create a new sheet and see if we can add examples of all of those different sizes. We'll do this simply by inserting an additional view, perhaps a front view in this case. Since we're gonna have 10 of these, we probably want to adjust our scale a little bit. And we also might wanna show a specific dimension for each of these lengths. So for instance, we'll go ahead and go back to our model items tool, choose to insert the dimensions. And if we just want to show the length, we don't need to show these other ones. These are going to be the same for pretty much every configuration. <clears throat> now 
Now that we have a particular view here, we also might want to label which configuration is being used. We can do this with a linked note. We'll simply insert a note within that drawing view, go ahead and spell out which configuration it is. And in fact, we might not even want that here. We probably just want to be able to show the size title. So once I have that, I'll choose to link this to a property. I can link it to a property within the model that's found in this, in this current drawing view. And one of those properties that I can use is the configuration name. Now that I have that, I can take this drawing view and copy and paste it for all of my other sizes. I'll go ahead and space these out a little bit better. And once I have multiple sizes here, I can begin to change them to the specific size that I want to show. So for instance, we probably want to show size one up here, maybe size two right here, and so on and so forth. Let's go ahead and jump ahead and see what the finished product will look like. Okay, so after some careful positioning, we can see here that we now have every single size of this Allen wrench listed on this second sheet. I mentioned there were two ways to display the dimensions earlier, so let's take a look at that second way. If you didn't actually want to display the dimension value here, perhaps you just wanted to show length instead, one way we could do that is by grabbing that dimension and then swiping out the dimension display in the dimension text. We'll get a warning about tolerance display, but we can go ahead and continue. And now I can type in something like length for this particular dimension. We'll do the same thing over here for uh, hex dimension or hex diameter. You'll see there we get sort of a dual display since we just typed it in. Um, but if we go back and turn off our dimension names, we can now see that it's just showing that dimension text that we just typed in. After our rebuild, we can see that our dimension names are centered a lot better. And now we can simply reference the design table to show all of those dimensions for the length and the hex diameter for each configuration of this Allen wrench. Hope you've enjoyed this week's video tech tip on how to insert design tables into drawings. And stay tuned for the next one. Thanks.